At this point, we've learned how to install executables and MSIs, and we've learned some of the switches in order to silence those or to make those so they install without user interaction. But there's a lot of other different types of applications we can install as well, and we can install scripts. But we don't need to just install things. We can actually use Smart Imager as, for instance, a shell or a command prompt to interact with Windows directly. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I click Create, I'm going to create one that turns the firewall off. So I'm going to say Turn Off Windows Firewall. And in the Install command, all I'm going to do is call a NetSH command. A NetSH command is a built-in command in Windows to do different things. And in this case, we're going to use a, a few different options or parameters in order to turn off the firewall. So in this case, it's going to be NetSH Advanced Firewall Set, right? And then what we need to do is we need to say All Profiles. And if I need to spell it right, we're going to turn the state to off and then just click Save. So in this case, all we're doing is we're calling a direct command to Windows and we're saying, call the NetSH command, here's some parameters in order to turn off the firewall. We're not actually referencing any folder and so for basically no folder is going to be in the C apps directory for this specific command. But I might warn you that if you're using a command like this, anything you type in is going to be viewable as free text in the log. So you may not want to put anything like a password inside the install command. Let me give you another example here. I'm going to go ahead and clone this and I'm going to name it to set time to central standard. And because I live in the center of the United States, I can set all my computers to the central standard time. And I'm going to do that by tzutil. And then I'm going to basically just say switch s and then central standard. And I say central standard, standard time, right? And then click save. So I, and in this case, I want to make sure that they're on the, 192 subnet here, uh, or I'm going to say within the 192 subnet. So anything outside of that is not going to actually set the set the time to uh, central. So I can basically look at the subnets uh, for all of the computers that I'm imaging throughout the world or throughout the country or however big your enterprise is, and then have it set the time directly by just calling a TZU tzutil directory directly out of Windows. All right, I hope that made sense. I'm going to choose a few more things here, like um, how about to uh, allow um, remote desktop. In order to re allow the remote desktop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on my server that I have a directory called scripts, right? And in my scripts directory, I have a few scripts that I can do uh, here that I've set up uh, prior. For instance, I have a turn off firewall, so I can actually call it through PowerShell, uh, through, through PowerShell rather than calling it directly from the command line. Um, but one, uh, one other thing I have is a remote, uh, enable remote desktop. And if I look at this, basically what it's doing is it's putting in a registry key. And then again, it's calling that netsh command. So I'm going to call that command directly. Um, from the Smart Imager console. So let me go back over to the console and I'm going to click Create and I'm going to say Allow Remote Desktop and I will reference that scripts directory and here it is. I'll click OK and then I'll say which script I want to reference. And in this case, it will be that command file. You'll notice that when I reference it, it's going to just reference it directly. But if I referenced another one, let's say this VB script file here, then it's going to put in a C script or you know, it's going to call C script before referencing that file. And of course, you've seen a PowerShell file already, but I'll show you one again. So to turn off firewall here, it's going to reference the PowerShell file, but it's going to do it by calling PowerShell exe first and then setting the execution policy to unrestricted. 
I can also call any registry files, right? So if I choose this registry file, it'll actually type in regedit and then reference the registry file. And lastly, I'll show you what a batch file looks like. And it's going to be basically the same as my command file. And it's going to reference that file directory directly. So there's a lot of different script files that I can use in Smart Imager, and Smart Imager knows how to treat those natively. All right, so enough fooling around here. I'll go back to my command file and choose to enable remote uh, desktop from my command file and then click Save. Now you'll notice that I did have that uh, enable firewall and that was a PowerShell file. Let me show you something real quick. I'm gonna go back to my turn off Windows firewall and instead of using the netsh command, I'm gonna reference the script directory here and I'm going to call that PowerShell file. So here, uh, that PowerShell file is the bottom one, turn off the firewall and I'll click OK. Now I have two different files that are both referencing that scripts directory. So on my client side, I'm gonna have the C app script directory. And then inside of that, I'm gonna have all of the scripts, not just the two I referenced, but all of them because it's gonna pull that entire folder over. But what if I say on cleanup to delete all the files out of there on one of them? Well, it is going to delete all the files, but Smart Imager will wait until after the imaging process in order to delete that directory. And the reason is, is because it knows you might be referencing that folder more than once. So it's gonna wait until it, after all applications are installed and then it will delete that directory. So you don't have to worry about your order of operations and just in case you've deleted the directory um, uh, in, in, in a script that you reference that same folder in and then you're trying to reference it again and it's not there. Smart Image is going to hold that folder and wait until the very end to delete it. All right. One other type of package that I want to show you we can install is using immutable files or NuGet packages. NuGet packages are a great way to install applications because, again, they are immutable or they're non-changing. So you can reference any package in any way and it'll always reference the exact same way. If you haven't looked into immutable packaging, you might wanna look into a company called Chocolatey. If you go to chocolatey.org or send us a, um, an email at contact us at smartimager.com, we'd be happy to introduce you to the guys over at Chocolatey or give you some more information about using Chocolatey. But because so many of our clients already use it, I did want to take some time out to show you how to install and then reference Chocolatey files. So in this case, I'm going to create a new application and I'm going to name it Install Chocolatey. And I've already created a Chocolatey folder and in that folder I have a PowerShell file. So I'm going to go ahead and reference that PowerShell file and click OK. That's all I need to do at this point. So I've installed the Chocolatey client now. Now what I need to do is I merely need to call Chocolatey packages. So if I wanted to install Firefox, for instance, I can just type in Firefox. And I'll just reference it with Choco just in the name so I know. And I don't need to put in a folder path. I can actually just say Choco install Firefox and then for uh, switch Y to make it silent. And it's gonna go out, that client machine is gonna go out to the internet, find Firefox or find the chocolatey package for Firefox, grab it, download it, install it totally silently. Now keep in mind, if you're installing chocolatey packages this way, you don't have to have them local to the client, but the client will need internet access in order to go get that file and grab it down and install it. And you might want to be concerned about the security involved because if you're installing chocolatey packages like this, you're grabbing them directly from the internet. And in this case, you're using a community-based package, and so you don't know if there is some bad actors in that software. So in order to get around this, you might want to create your own pack packaging server or your own chocolatey server as your smart imager server. 
Another caveat of chocolatey is you may need to put in CMD switch C before you call it. And the reason is a smart imager may actually have to use a shell reference in order to call the Choco file. So it's a, a better way to call this would be CMD switch C, and you can do this in front of any of your install commands, and then Choco install Firefox, and then click Save. Let me show you how to install a different type of chocolatey package, but not calling it from the community repository. And what I'll do is I'll create a new one here and I'll say EM editor. And I'll reference this as a chocolatey file as well. And I've already set up a folder called EM editor and I'll reference that here and I'll click OK. And then all I need to do is just say Choco install EM edit, which is what I named the package. And then I need to tell it the source, and the source is going to be C colon backslash apps backslash EM editor. And then I'll do the switch Y to keep it silent. Now, you'll notice that I didn't put quotes around C colon backslash apps EM editor, and the reason is, is because when I created my application repository, I don't put spaces in any of the folders that I'm referencing. I always use what's called camel casing, and I highly suggest you do the same thing because it's much easier to be able to reference something and not have to worry about where the quotation marks goes or, or how I need to set, set that string up. So in here, you'll see that I have an EM editor folder, and in there I have my NuGet package, and that's all I need in order to install EM editor. So basically, if I go back over to the Smart Imager um, console here, I'm referencing is it as EM edit, which is what the package name internally is called, and then where that package is, and I'll go ahead and click save. You can also copy that, call that rather, from a known source. If you're, for instance, if you set up Smart Imager as a chocolatey server as well, you could have named that, let's say, Ch SI Choco, right? So as an example, you could just do source SI Choco if SI Choco was actually the unnamed source in Chocolatey that you've already set up. Once again, if you need more information about how to use immutable packaging or how to use an immutable package manager or how to set up Chocolatey, just send us a, a, an email at uh, contact us at smartimager.com. We'd be happy to show you how to use those. All right, I'm going to click close here on this and I'm going to leave this and not keep it as it's set up. And I'm going to show you how to install Microsoft Office. There's several ways to install Office. You can use the Office 365 click to install in which you're referencing just the bootstrapper. In this case, I'm actually going to use the full installer. So I'll click a create here and I'll name it MS Office 365 and I will point to the 365 directory that I've already set up, which is here, and I will call my setup file, which is here. Now, prehand, I've set up my configuration XML, so to call that, all I would need to do is do a forward slash configure, and then the name of my XML file that I've configured and click save. If we go back and look at our server now, and we go into that office directory, you can see that I have an install XML file. If I look at this, right, you can see that I'm referencing the C apps office directory that I have already set up right here. So you'll want to make sure that you edit your configuration file so it references things correctly from the client, and that's always going to be under the C apps directory. You'll notice that I'm also um, referencing the log file to look at the C apps Office 365 x86 directory as well. So once I've set that up, I can come back to my console here and I can click save. And now um, that's a great way for me to install Microsoft Office uh, without having to do a whole lot except for setting up that configuration file.